I'm very happy I can be here because um, I'm a bit um, as an exception here because uh, um, we I'm here as a guinea pig from the Czech Republic uh, <laughs> because um, we don't think of uh, of uh, basic uh, skills and essential skills, uh, key competencies and so on as much as you do, which makes us a bit left behind. Um, so um, instead of showing you uh, how far we are, I will show you um, something about why we are so left behind and um, I will uh, present my institution, well, I, institution I work for uh, for about 10 months now uh, because uh, we are a platform to cooperate and to, uh, you know, push forward uh, either basic skills delivery uh, in our country or in Europe. Um, so I decided uh, I start with a little geography lesson. Mm -hmm. If it works, I would we'll have to. OK, I'm sure just for you uh, who don't know, we're just in the middle of Europe. How? I know why it doesn't work, because it's off. <laughs> so <laughs> we're just in the middle. Uh, we have a very, uh, you know, uh, strange <coughs> shape, uh, and it's not only Prague. I have to say that we have more area than Prague. Yeah. I'm sure everybody knew, yeah. knows. What we are famous for is this. Good. Quite good beer, yes. Uh, quite good food, but not very healthy. <laughs> what else? Quite good cars. Skoda? Yes. Uh, so we've been uh, known for uh, heavy industry as well. Uh, as well as for logistics, because being in the middle of Europe, of course, it makes us a crossroad. Uh, mostly for a railway and uh, roadway uh, traffic. So uh, we are into logistics quite a lot. Then, craft is quite, we, we've been known for yeah. history as very good uh, craftsmen. Glass you can see the glass, known. yes. Uh, yeah. And for all those, you need what? quite skilled yes. workforce, yes, and machinery, I forgot, I'm sorry, quite skilled workforce. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's not my dog. <laughs> quite skilled workforce. Um, what we can rely on is uh, historically quite a good uh, basic education, uh, but it's a thing we take for granted for many years and sometimes it has some drawbacks and uh, we try to improve it uh, but still it is quite a solid basics for um, the adult education let's say adult education in our country after the change in our political system more than 20 years ago was left uh, as I put it in the right where it was left to the hand of the market. So uh, the politicians, uh, the government, uh, assumed that um, the hand of the market will solve all the, you know, uh, further education, professional education, and so on. And uh, therefore, there are many institutions providing adult education. And uh, some time ago, just from you know the beginning, let's say, um, some of the people working in adult education uh, thought that it's much better if we get united than uh, you know working on our own as competitors in the adult education market. I pass this round for you to. 
um, have something from me. Yeah. I didn't bring any chocolates. I brought this <laughs> literature <Yeah>. for you. <laughs> uh, so they, uh, in 1990, they gathered to associate, <laughs> to uh, put the hats together and the voices together. And they uh, established the Association of Adult Education Institutions because it was a very clever idea because uh, if you speak for, as one institution, you are never heard. If you speak as a body, with uh, more than 200 voices, thank you. Uh, y you are much better, you know, taken much better heard. Um, in 2008, we had still quite few, only 110 members. Now we have about 230 members. Uh, you have uh, here, you've got the proportion of uh, commercial institutions uh, we also have vocational schools, secondary schools, and universities, and also departments of companies um, uh, which deliver uh, professional education to their employees. Um, we are very active. Uh, we're a very um, small body uh, in um, employees. Uh, but uh, the members, the board, for example, they work for free, they voluntary in that. And uh, the only paid uh, employees of the association is me and uh, my two secretaries, assistants at the office. So we're not very big, yeah. But uh, we are members of quite, um, important bodies in our country as well as uh, in European platform. Uh, we also participate in many other things. We also act as uh, professional educators or providing uh, education um, to our members. Uh, we organize conferences, seminars, workshops, uh, mm, professional development courses for um, our members, which are open to public, but our members al always uh, get a very significant discount or have it for free. Um, we participated on um, nat uh, creating national qualification framework, especially uh, the, um, our job was to create the qualification for a uh, lecturer in further education. That's ac actually um, translation from Czech. I'm not, you know, I wanted to show you that we don't have it as a teacher. We don't uh, perceive it as a teacher, but rather than lecturer or, you know, adult educator. And uh, we call it further education. That means professional as education as well as, uh, you know, um, educator in delivering, you know, in hobbies, active citizenship, mm -hmm. as well as digital or or basic skills, we can say. Uh, I wonder if you have a internet connection in that, <coughs> you see. Um, this is, yes. And you can say that um, in, uh, this is uh, National Qualification Framework, and we have uh, one to seven. One to seven. I don't know what it says, so I cross it here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this one is uh, a field of or family of qualifications in uh, in pedagogy, uh, pedagogy uh, teaching, and social care. And you can see that the only one in level seven, uh, you've got uh, our lecturer in further education. And it's quite uh, difficult to the, you know, the, the, if you want to see it, I can show it to you, but uh, I don't, I it's in Czech, so I doubt it will. <laughs> Even though I have found out that some of you are quite good in Czech. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we have those, uh, uh, from 
those or parts of qualifications um, from uh, making up the or creating the content and structure of the program up to the uh, you know uh, presenting competences or didact met methodology as a lot to evaluation and uh, uh, feedback yeah. Yeah. so it's quite complex and uh, the examination is quite long it takes uh, two from four hours oh. to go th all th uh, through all those because each of each uh, has uh, more than one point and um, it is quite successful we are very proud of uh, being I don't know what it has okay so let's let's leave it um, so this was this was something uh, which called for systematic approach because adult educator in our country can be just anybody mm. we don't we have quite strict rules for teachers at schools but no rules for uh, adult educator for lecture in adult education uh, the only thing is that um, he or she must be either employee of an institution or it can be uh, I don't know how how do you call it <laughs> can you help me Angela yeah, sure. uh, that the you know one man business one man uh, businessman, so you, you get the yeah. yes, self-employed self yeah. person. And to get the permission to be self-employed, you only have to ask that you want to teach adults. No more qualifications. And that's uh, why we stepped in, into the process of nat national qualification framework and tried to implement it even in the law for the self-employment uh, we want to, we are also concerned in quality of uh, institutions and quality of the lectures. So what we say is now and what we try to implement into the system is that uh, the institutions should employ only qualified lectures. That means uh, practitioners, people who are engineers teaching engineering and so on and um, with um, andragogy or pedagogy background courses and so on so that is our uh, topic very important topic of uh, it's been on for the last two years and I think we still work on it we are getting further and further uh, we're not uh, stepping, you know, huge steps, but little by little we get into it. Um, and of course we can't only push into the ministries, we also have to do a lot of things uh, for popularization, for marketing of that idea. Uh, so what we do is, for example, quality uh, competitions for uh, our uh, not only for our members, but for adult education institutions in our country. Um, last Wednesday, um, it was a very big conference, and there was uh, we announced the winner for the uh, for this year, 2013, and it uh, it was the Channel Crossings, uh, which is a company delivering or providing. Uh, uh, language education and translations and interpreting and so on they are very um, very good and uh, and uh, very successful I would say and that's uh, what we want to, s to show that um, there are institutions which can be very successful and you can s you can see that on their website uh, they are really marketing the that they won the competition mm -hmm. so um, <coughs> it's very popular then we're working on projects I uh, uh, because I talked about our projects already here so I put a few of them here uh, those uh, are finished just recently 
we were doing the strategy, uh, strategy of age management in our country and now we are working on a new age management program and it is implementation of age management in the Czech Republic. I told you about the uh, age management the other day. Um, that is uh, not only working with the older generation of workforce but also with uh, you know, working with people throughout their career from the start till the end when they retire. Um, uh, we were also talking about the workability index, so I put uh, the picture of uh, the workability index, which is taken, I have to say that, from this web page, so you can find it quite easily in uh, Finnish, uh, institution, Finnish Institute of Occup Occupational Health in Helsinki. They are working for, they've been working on it for 30 years, and it's a very nice concept which I think has a lot to do with uh, basic skills actually. I didn't know it before, I found out this week because um, the workability is uh, the ability, the skills you've got to do your job you're doing as I said before and it's like a house. The basis for that, the foundation the first floor of the house is health and functional capacities. Okay, of course you have to be healthy and good, uh, in a good condition to do your job. The second, ah, sorry, the mm. second one, the second one is competence. That means education. Then values, attitudes and motivation. And this is a balcony. <laughs> which is very important because in that floor with values, attitude and motivation you have to look out for your close community that means friends and family because in that floor in the values, attitudes, motivation to work you've got the family and I'm sure ladies when you had your babies your motivation to work was not as um, you know keen as it is now for example if uh, the family grows up uh, then this is important this floor is work environment and management of the companies okay um, that and that can be changed either by uh, regulations given to the companies in um, Europe or in member states. It can also be uh, influenced by the company structure, company rules, habits we've got in our countries. And uh, everything what is around the house, it's called operational environment and is dependent on society, culture, legislation, education policy, social and health policy uh, because it's all together and it, uh, it can uh, you know, uh, build up uh, your work workability index and if something is wrong here in your competence <laughs> it is crooked, it is you know, not tried the house can all collapse. If you feel lacking something here, for example, it can all go, s you know, uh, bad, wrong, in a wrong direction and collapse. Right, then what we organize is, um, uh, we call it Adult Education Week, uh, quite an annual activity which um, serves as motivation uh, of adults to participate in that lifelong learning, to um, you know remove the obstacles, barriers. Uh, we tr at the beginning we did everything from park, and it proved to us not to be a very good path because uh, uh, people in park, um, because they are in the middle of uh, everything in our country of uh, a lot of 
uh, international companies, they are quite motivated into their development. But we have a few deprived regions where the motivation uh, towards adult education and further development uh, was a bit poorer. So we passed that to uh, regions. We've got uh, 13 regions in our country. So they're quite small. And uh, we have our members to work in the regions and to uh, do some actions towards the uh, Adult Education Week, like open courses, seminars, workshops, and discussion groups for free. Or they open the doors for the public to come and see that adult education institutions are not horror places. You know, that they are quite nice. They can uh, nicely come relax and learn something. Uh, we've got hundreds of actions, thousands of participants now, quite successful. Uh, it is, uh, it is uh, supported by the Ministry of Education as well as uh, the Ministry of Labor. We've got, uh, we've got the <coughs> web page for that, actions, and you can see, I can show you if I get into the map. Yes, those are the regions, and if you if you click on the regions, you get all the things which are happening here. Got it in the very uh, very small. So anyway, so there is a list of all the things going on in the region. Okay, so what are our basic skills in the Czech Republic? Uh, uh, what is uh, influence uh, on basic skills in our country? We have very few immigrants. But I can't understand, but nobody wants to come to our country. <laughs> <coughs> there are a few. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, we're not focused on basic skills or co key competencies. That's why we don't know if... Uh, uh, we don't. We're not aware of them, but it doesn't say that they, the lack of it, does not exist. Um, we are aware of uh, lacking basic skills or uh, uh, key competencies uh, when uh, you are unemployed. Whenever you, g you become unemployed, you go to the labor office and you are delivered uh, basic skills. But my question is, isn't it too late? Uh, teacher training in adult education is recognized as a qualification now 